Now, the weather these days can be rather unpredictable. As we all know, we're seeing wetter weather because of the northeast monsoon, but the days are getting warmer as well. The Meteorological, Meteorological Service says Singapore's average temperature rose by 0.26 degrees Celsius every 10 years from 1951 to 2012. Now, this figure is consistent with global trends and it shows how Singapore is not immune to global warming. So to better understand the impact of climate change, a research center was launched in March. It's the first one in the world dedicated to studying tropical climate and weather of Singapore and of Southeast Asia. So to tell us more is Dr. Chris Gordon from the Center for Climate Research Singapore. So doctor, thank you very much for coming in today. Very nice to be here. Yep. Your center, it opened in March, so it's been a few months already. Yes. What have you achieved so far? Yeah, well, I joined the center in April just after uh, the opening. So obviously the growth of the centre is one thing that's been a priority. But in terms of the actual science that we've been doing towards the climate agenda, the understanding, um, we are, as we speak, right in the middle point of the second national climate study, which will produce in about a year's time the sort of a new set of climate predictions specifically for Singapore. So we can answer in detail some of the questions for Singapore. But uh, you, you're talking about climate prediction, but it's mm. so unpredictable these days. I mean, look at today, for example. It was really hot in the morning and it was pouring, cats and dogs, and it was really hot again and now it started raining again. So, you know, how do you track all these uh, developments? Yeah, it's interesting. I think in most parts of the world, people think that the weather day to day is changing and getting worse or something. In actual fact, the, 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 the weather and the climate changes from one year to the next, from one month to the next, for natural reasons as well as for natural sort of climate change. And to actually think that these things are due to man's effects and climate change, we need to experience them for much longer periods of time. You know, th that we've had unusual weather this winter compared to last winter doesn't tell us it's necessarily to do with climate change. But, but a part of it has to be due to climate change. We can't uh, you know, completely eliminate yeah. that possibility altogether, can we? Uh, no, it, it, it's, that's true. And, and part of it will be to do with climate change. I'm not saying it won't be. But what I'm saying is there's other effects as well, which are, are, are bigger at the moment than that climate change, particularly when we're looking at changes in rainfall, so, which are the things most people are, are interested in, of course. And, and they, they're happening for a variety of different reasons. And one of, going back to your first questions, yeah. one of the things we're studying is trying to understand in detail what the changes in heavy rainfall in Singapore are being caused by. Some of it will be to do with climate change, but as I said, there's multiple other factors as well which for need example? to be understood. Well, it, the, the climate system varies from year to year through other causes and some big oscillations in the atmosphere that have always been there and probably will always will be there in future. And those are also causing those changes. And one of the key questions is, is how big are those changes compared to the changes being called by, caused by man-made climate change? So what you're saying is that we should be bracing for uh, very wet months ahead, given that it's it now we're in the northeast monsoon period. Yeah, so now we are in the northeast monsoon period, as you say, and that is climatologically the wettest period of the year, so it, it will be wet. Uh, it will be different to... Uh, last year's monsoon, it will be different to the monsoon the year after because of this year-to-year -year variability. Now, this, what about, then what about hotter weather then? Yeah, now hotter weather, where temperature is concerned, there's a very strong link of temperature in Singapore to the global warming signal that you mentioned at the beginning of the interview. And we will indeed expect that the temperatures in Singapore will continue to increase as the global temperature increases as well. They don't increase by exactly the same amount. There's other factors again at play but it's a much closer relationship for temperature than it is for rainfall in relating global warming to what's happening in Singapore. And what about other extremes in weather? For example, we had a hailstorm in, in June. That, that wasn't expected. Uh, can we expect more of such unusual uh, weather patterns to happen? Yeah, we, we do expect because of climate change for there to be more intense rainfall and therefore more intense circulations in the atmosphere of the kind that do produce hell. But on the other hand, the reason you don't see hell very often in Singapore or anywhere in the tropics is because it melts on the way down. So you've got these two competing things again. It's not that simple. The hell will melt because the, it will get warmer in future. So you think, oh, we'll get less hell. But then the intensity of these storms is increasing as well. And so these two things together, it remains to be seen. But there's no reason to think that we will get lots more hail in future now. All right. And we look forward to all the research that's going to come out of your centre okay. down the road. Thank you very much for coming in today. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. And that, that was uh, Dr. Chris Gordon about the changing weather patterns in Singapore and in the region as well.